Many of us notice lumps in our neck, for example, a distinct swelling near the jaw or along the side of the neck. Some individuals find a small, painful bump in the armpit and sometimes in the groin. Especially people focus on this lump when it hurts upon touching or when it does not resolve. It is the classical description of enlarged lymph nodes, which we call lymphadenopathy. Lymph nodes are small, bean-shaped structures where our immune system cells reside. A human has around 600 lymph nodes, most of them in the neck, the armpit, between the lungs, the groin and the abdomen. They are like small military camps where the soldiers live near the borders of a country. If an enemy appears, they are activated and fight off the intruders. In humans, when bacteria, viruses or cancer cells reach a lymph node, they detect these pathogens and begin to fight, so the whole immune system becomes active and alarmed. When immune system cells detect a microbe or a cancer cell, they become activated. This means immune system cells in the lymph node, which we call B cells and T cells, start rapid multiplication to get as many fighters as possible. At the same time, additional help arrives through the bloodstream, new immune system cells come and blood flow to the lymph node is increased. It is a complex process and more inflammation, more fluid, more lymphocytes and pathogens in battle cause the lymph node to enlarge. In children, enlarged lymph nodes are usually harmless, temporary and in most cases resolve on their own. Because most of them are caused by common viral infections, the lymph nodes are usually painful or tender to the touch. Practically any viral infection of the respiratory system can cause temporarily enlarged lymph nodes. Some lymph nodes remain enlarged after infection, called a reactive lymph node which may never shrink again, but it's not typically risky. One example is when a solitary lymph node is palpable, slightly enlarged and stable over time for several years. Usually it's benign, meaning there is some mild inflammatory reaction to an infection. However, such solitary enlarged lymph nodes always require further evaluation and sometimes a biopsy because of the risk of malignancy especially if this lymph node is located in the left supraclavicular region and is called virtuous node. It can be a sign of gastric cancer metastasis or from other abdominal cancers. When a lymph node remains stable for years, even if enlarged, it is less likely to be malignant or it can be malignant, but in a very indolent, slow process, often a two years window is used meaning if a lymph node stays stable for two years. Malignant processes are less likely but not completely excluded. Here's an important question. What do we call an enlarged lymph node? And can a normal, healthy person feel their own lymph node by touch or palpation? The answer is that in children, very often, yes. And that in adults, it is difficult to feel or palpate normal lymph nodes that are smaller than one centimeter. In very slim individuals with low fat levels, some lymph nodes can be felt even if they are normal. Especially in the groin, normal lymph nodes can be felt by touch and the lymph nodes below the jawline are often palpable even when normal. As a general rule in the neck, if the short axis of a lymph node diameter exceeds one centimeter, it is considered abnormal and in the armpit or groin. If they are larger than one five centimeters, generally the lymph node size from one to two centimeters is considered a gray zone requiring attention. Especially if there are symptoms, the lymph node sizes are usually measured by ultrasound or computed tomography. If lymph nodes remain enlarged for more than six weeks, it is called chronic lymphadenopathy. Now, let's say many lymph nodes are enlarged chronically in adults. First, we should note that the majority of enlarged lymph nodes are temporary, related to common colds and other viral infections that resolve on their own. When the condition is chronic, the most common cause is tuberculosis or other chronic infections like infectious mononucleosis. HEV infection, 
and cat scratch disease. In tuberculosis, the neck lymph nodes are most commonly enlarged. Also, infections can cause lymphadenopathy in multiple regions of lymph nodes. The most common symptoms in these cases are low-grade fever, night sweats, weight loss, and fatigue. In tuberculosis, chronic cough is a hallmark, often with coughing up blood. The second most common cause of chronic lymphadenopathy is autoimmune diseases. Such diseases include systemic lupus erythematosus, which causes enlarged lymph nodes, nodes throughout the body, along with the characteristic skin rash of lupus. Prematoid arthritis causes enlarged lymph nodes near affected joints, and sometimes more widespread also rheumatoid arthritis causes joint pain and swelling usually in the hands and wrists symmetrically Sjogren syndrome can cause lymphadenopathy particularly in the salivary glands and cervical nodes also for Sjogren syndrome common symptoms are dry eyes and mouth and sarcoidosis is a granulomatous disease that can affect multiple organs including lymph nodes it often causes lymphadenopathy in the chest near the lungs. The third most common cause of chronically enlarged lymph nodes is malignancies or cancers. For example, lymphoma, which originates in the lymphatic system, can cause painless enlarged lymph nodes. Leukemias can also infiltrate lymph nodes or there can be metastasis from other sites, often spreading first to another region such as with breast cancer, lung cancer or melanoma.